Sanbonani again, family, and welcome to another episode of The Wellness Couch. And we're gearing up for July and August now, so it's going to be so much more exciting. So do come join me and let's do this wellness party all over again. And we're back in this extremely scenic room for another episode of the Wellness Couch. It's been so wonderful to receive all the feedback you've been giving us on our very first brand new, new look, new vibe show with Ndoni Tulu. I'm bringing you an equally phenomenal guest today to celebrate an incredibly special occasion with Nelson Mandela Day. We're getting into the food network today. I want to officially, officially welcome Chef Linto Bremo to the Wellness Couch. <laughs> It's not very culty today yeah. because I heard you're a very good guy. Um, <laughs> so I can so, do like an upright situation. You know what I mean? You can do the postures. <laughs> you, you've still got your back. You're now, I'm now must get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with, I guess, something that is close to home. Where did this love affair with food start? I've always wanted to ask you this question. The, the first way I can answer it is, mm. when did you stop having a love affair with food? because we all started eating nine months before we came onto this earth. Right. I think I just took it one step above and I actually delved into the understanding and the studying of it and the entertaining of it and the cooking of it. So I think my love of food has always been there. But to take it into a professional um, um, uh, platform, so, yes. it was... You know, so I worked in corporate for like four years no before I became a chef. Ways. Yeah. And then finally about 25, I just decided that I wanted to live a life that made me happy, okay. regardless of the amount of money I was making for my corporate job. Taste Africa, how, how did it differ from Africa on a plate and what was your vision with that? It's fine dining cuisine, right. uh, respecting the heritage of our food, and also a relaxed environment of eating. So I wanted that kind of like camaraderie and that kind of feel and spirit right. when I launched Taste Africa. So we had one long table here, right. 40 guests, right Chip, where we are now, where we are now. So we had 40 guests here and right. I'll come through and I'll serve them my jollof rice. Um, and I'll explain to them, you know, for me what jollof rice is, you know, right. my first jollof rice was a seafood one. Yes. And I'm going to give you an explanation of how I tasted. Yeah, the so first jollof rice I had, mm -hmm. And the one I needed to cook first right. needed to taste like muddy, sandy, sea, fish, rice, something. Okay. And the reason why is because I had it in uh, Abuja. Yes. And Abuja is landlocked. Okay. Okay. And they only have catfish. So for me, when I think of seafood jollof rice, I literally picture the texture of catfish. I see and taste like almost sandy or earthy. Okay, so I need that to come through in the dish and for my stories to be believable by my guests, I need to really express that through what I say and the dish itself. Right. What is your definition of healthy beauty? The least touched, processed, manufactured the product is, the healthier it will be. Okay. The greener, the more raw it is, the healthier it is for you. Got you. The slower, longer cooked it is, right. the more nutrients we retain in the food. Okay. One of the things that's fantastic about new foods that we're not used to is the nutritional value. So oftentimes we're not great at reading labels. Right. Um, so this is Terrible a sneaky question. Do you read labels when you buy food? Um, I read important labels. Okay, tell me what's going on. I want to stay away from MSG. So I want to stay way. away from products that say they can remain in my cupboard for like six months. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because food should be eaten at its most natural, at its most freshest, at its most uh, rawest. Right. You know, so if I can keep on cheesy in my cupboard, not in the fridge for three months, nah, what's going on here? <laughs> uh, what's the one ingredient you cannot do without when you make meal? Oh, uh, God! Okay, top three. Thyme, salt, garlic. Oh, okay, no, thyme, time? salt, butter. No, butter and salt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who is extremely conscious about putting out positive messages mm -hmm. and us also focusing on men's health, what would you say is one lesson as a man you've learned that has helped in your personal growth and development? 
all those sicknesses that our grandfathers, uncles back in the day used to get, men, please let's start checking them earlier in life rather than later. Because the kind of diet that we're in and the kind of lifestyles we live now, a lot of those sicknesses are, we're seeing are affecting men are much younger. Correct. Much younger. So I think the one big thing is like that I'm, I'm not scared to get checked out. It gives me such, such comfort and hope that we're really going to get this message out there. Because, no, we have to. Because it doesn't just belong to science. No. This message of living well and living and living in a way that is responsible. And people always say to me, but there's this, Gabi is very healthy. Oh, I'm standing on that one. Please give me your opinion. Please share that. And I'm just like, actually, it is so cheap. It is actually so cheap. Amen. Just Amen. do something that your body didn't do yesterday. Like Correct. go for a small, a, a young run. This is the moment where I drop the mic. <laughs> I could carry on with you. I'm having <laughs> such a fantastic time. The, the one thing, if you could give a young, young African child any message of hope right now, what message would you want to give them on Mandela Day? Um, dreaming is good. Parents, teach your kids to dream. Teach them to dream. I am only at this table now, so I'm just talking to you because I dreamt. Dreaming is just dreaming if you do nothing about it, Sass. You gotta put action to it and follow through. You know, and I feel like as parents, we don't teach our kids that. We say, yes, you go by my you go by astronaut, but the humble phone. Be diligent, be consistent. You know, and I only learned that when I was doing this journey with African Place, right. is I had a beautiful plan. And I got sat down with one person that gave me a no, uh, a big brand in the country. Yeah. And they were like, mate, we're giving you a no, but don't stop now. You carry on doing whatever you're going to do. Put your message, put your videos out there, do something. You carry on doing it because you'll get to where you want to get to. But if we believed all those no's, my dreams would just ended right there and there. So the follow through was, okay, I got a no, but let me follow through. Oh, where can I put these videos up where they can be seen? Oh, YouTube.